from the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube, covering Koopa Inspire 2019. Brought to you by Koopa. Welcome to The Cube, Lisa Martin on the ground in Las Vegas for Koopa Inspire 19. Hot Vegas, I should say. I'm pleased to welcome Max Groundick, Managing Director from Deloitte to the program. Hey, Max. Good morning, good afternoon. Good afternoon, good, good day. On, whatever time it is. That's, That's right. Vegas, right? You're it inside. It is Vegas. It's a time warp, they don't let you see outside. It's the only place in the world with the 25th hour. Right. So here we are at Inspire 19. Kick, everything kicked off this morning with a general session. I was teasing Rob Bernstein a couple hours ago when I had him on that I, I learned three things in the general session. He likes pizza, he likes kittens, and Kuba's platform now has $1.2 trillion of spend data going through it. And I thought, man, procurement is not what I thought it was. And you have a really interesting story about procurement. I'd love for you to share with our audience. Because you said in your session earlier today, you said, in people in the standing room only session, how many of you wanted to be on procurement? You said, anybody that raises their hands is lying. Right. Tell me about the procurement of yesterday, yeah. the opportunities that it's given you, and what it is now. So I think in the past, procurement has been something that had to happen. It was a must have. Not a place that people saw value, but was the rule enforcers, right? So trying to do that and really adding value by discipline. Whereas today, if you think about it, the, the value that they can add by driving savings for the organization drops right to the bottom line. So all the savings that are out there, all the negotiations that they're doing, it's really a unique skill set. And something that people really should, should move into finance folks when they're looking for a new opportunity, but it's a great skill set to have. Lately I've come across a, you know, former attorneys who aren't practicing law, but now doing strategic sourcing, doing procurement work, people from finance, because the, the talent that you have to have is be able to work with people within the companies, understand their needs, negotiate with suppliers, do hardcore analytics, and oh, by the way, we're talking about Coupa, it's helped them change and implement a technology like that. It's really fascinating. It's so much more than being a buyer or being somebody that's controlling a particular business unit's ability to buy and spend. One of the interesting things about Coupa is this platform that allows what started, I think, initially as, as more procurement, kind of um, invoicing is now expanded to also include payments and expenses and travel management and contingent workforce management. So what the CPO now has the opportunity to do is, is get this visibility right. across an entire business of all of the spend, and to your point, make massive impacts to the bottom line. Yeah, I mean, data is so important, right? In the past, the vendors had all the information. Why? Because the salespeople had to get commissions. They knew exactly what was being bought at that company. Yep. Today, you can reverse engineer saying, sell, sales. I say it's reverse sales. I can go in there and I tell them now. I have the full picture. So if, if it's divided up that category by three or four different vendors, they're making assumptions about how much market share they have. I know it all. I can create a model, a pricing model, and then reverse engineer it. It's really reverse sales. I'm telling them now why they should give me a great discount for the organization. And I have the ability to actually enforce that and drive the savings that we have for the organization, but also help them drive their numbers on sales. So it's a mutually you know, beneficial relationship. They have more market share, I drive better value for the organization. It really works well. Well, one of the, the disruptors that you're kind of alluding to is this consumerization. You know, when you go to buy a car these days, you just walk in there, you have, as a, as a buyer, or as a consumer of an automobile, you have access to every piece of information possible. Right. So the whole transactional process, the sales process is different. So as consumers in our regular lives, we, we have so much expectation that we can find anything, go to AW, Amazon, find anything that we want, get it delivered tomorrow, and have all these information on what, where's the best place I can get it, who's selling it for what, how is this person a you know, more trustworthy supplier. So this consumerization element and how it's changing the role of the CPO and the CFO is really revolutionary. It, it really is, and so you think about it, most of us go out to Amazon and buy something, and really the only control there for me, for example, is my wife has to approve it, right? So that's the only veto authority. <laughs> so that's really the only difference between the two platforms, if you think about Sorry, it, maybe. is there's controls in place, so you're doing the right thing. But from an end user perspective, if I go out there and find the right item, and again, in Amazon, I don't have to go find the supplier, I don't know if that would be on contract. Why do we have to do that work? You shouldn't have to. I should just go out there and say, I need this, 
And in the background, Coupa is working all those things, presenting the right products on the right contracts, driving the right value, and almost as important, minimizing the risk. So across all those different lenses, you see why the value of Coupa is. For the end user, they're getting what they need. For the organization, for the company, we're reducing risk and we're in, you know, increasing value. And then you have rich reporting on the back end. So it's just, it's a great way of doing business. It really is taking what you used to do, or what you do on Sunday afternoon, to like Rob used to say, Monday at work. And I think that's really powerful, thinking from that perspective. It is, and it can be it's so impactful if applied in the right way with a, an organization, whether it's a manufacturer or a hospital or a retailer, that has a culture that is willing to embrace change, right? I mean, there, there's that, right? Especially, I'd get, love to get your perspective on when you're implementing Coupa at a large organization that maybe have been around for many, many, sure. many years versus maybe a more modern, what we think might be more nimble organization culturally. Do you see massive differences in how they're leading procurement? And are you able to sort of level the playing field and show them, doesn't matter what your culture is, here's how your business, your bottom right. line is going to benefit. So from a change perspective, I think there's a different perception. The newer, nimbler organization believes that they change easy but it's still made up of people. The older organization, again, still made up of people. Most people don't like to change. But what I have learned is if you help them understand the value of it, how they're doing it, how their jobs are going to change, and give them the tools to do it, some people are going to be early adopters. But finding that one person in the organization, no matter what level they are in that business unit or in that department, that has that informal voice that people look to naturally, the, the, not the leader who's in a leadership position, but the leader from a personality perspective, get them on board, and sometimes that's the hardest thing to do. They might be the most change resistant, but once that person flips, they become your greatest, greatest advocate out there. So it's, it, it's a personal thing. This is hard work, that's what I talk about in our sessions, is going through this requires a lot of work, but it's, it's worth it, you can measure the value on the end, but you gotta help people understand why you're going on this journey, and, and have, have resources there for them to help them. So what were some of the, you said you had a good Q&A session during your breakout this afternoon. Tell me some of the things that, that some of the audience said that you thought was really like, they're getting it. Yeah, so the whole point of our session was going live is not really the goal, right? That's just the That's beginning. That's just the exact Right, and, and so most people focus on going live and the answer is congratulations. You purchased a product, Coupa, and now it's working. So what? You don't have any real data. What are you going to do in the future? Some of the questions were as they're going through supplier enablement, the shift between procurement now taking a larger role in the relationships with the vendors. Well, that's great. It should be a balanced relationship. You know, there's a procurement role in that, and then there's the end users, or the, the people in the organization from the business who have to relate with those suppliers. So work together. If you weren't working together in the past, now it's a great time to do that. Uh, there's some other questions about if something is not working correctly post go live, how quick, it's not broken, but it could be optimized, or you're getting complaints about it, how quick should you change it? The answer is, I don't know. It Measure depends. it yourself. I mean, obviously if it's broken, fix it, but it might be something around change. And maybe you have to help people understand why they're doing this new process. If people are giving you feedback, positive or negative, mostly it's going to be negative because positive, we just go off our way. Uh, welcome to Yelp. Um, <laughs> but if, if it's negative feedback, listen. Don't get offended. Understand their perspective and then measure it. Say, is it something that we did? Is it something the platform? Or is it just change? And work with it. What I tell our clients too is, in Coupa, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Meaning that it's really easy to build a field, custom field. Really easy to build custom approval chains. Really hard to maintain that stuff. So try to do it out of the, not out of the box, but configured without as much customization as possible. And then you can always improve and understand it better. Well, isn't that the key to adoption? Is, you know, the, the more customization that you have, I imagine the adoption funnel gets narrower and narrower. Um, it, it's kind of interesting. So you customize because you think that's the way the process should go because that's how I do it today. So if your goal is to take how you do your process today and put it into Coupa, I also tell clients, congratulations, if you had a bad process, now you have a bad process that works faster. So take the time to say, let's step back. Companies evolve, right? And so as they're evolving, if you haven't taken a really, a, a, a view, a purposeful view backwards and measure your organization, where you're at from a maturity model assessment, then you probably don't know where your gaps are. Take the opportunity when you're implementing Coupa to use kind of the leading practices that Coupa has. Start with that instead of going back to what you're doing today. You know, one great example of that is approvers. 
right? So people like to have 10 approvers because they think it reduces risk. So if I go back and look and I ask the audience today, like how many uh, purchase orders or requests get rejected? Very few. And how long do people actually have it open when they reprove it? So that three seconds when they open it up and looked at it, do they really assess it from a risk perspective? Probably not. But if four people ahead of them approved it, that person's just going to approve it because they think it's okay. Because they're assuming someone else is looking at it. As opposed to in Coupa now, I have the rich data to understand it. And I can minimize risk that way instead of trying to do it in what I, is a false sense of security. So, so getting people on board with bringing in automation and leveraging, like I was saying in the beginning, the 1.2 trillion of spend that's going through the Coupa platform to leverage that intelligence to not only have Coupa create the prescriptions, but for companies to be able to go, okay, we don't, we shouldn't, to your point, we shouldn't take a process that was clunky before and just do it right. faster, it's still clunky. Um, being able to have the automation, um, the analytics, really those core enabling technologies can also be quite revolutionary. Absolutely, and the also the insights. There? Yeah, absolutely, so the, the, the Coupa Insights now, and you're seeing that measured against others, and it's mass, but you see how you're doing against others is really powerful. Setting your goals out there and seeing how you're doing, adjusting those, really questioning yourself is if we're not getting these approved in the speed that we thought, how do we do it differently? Right. So, and that's nice about Coupa. It, it is really SaaS, right? And they really do come out with three releases a year, which is powerful. And so it's always changing, which means you have to be nimble, understand your organization, adopting the new technologies that come out there, and also looking at their acquisitions and seeing if that fits into what you're doing. Yep, exactly. Last question for you is the announcement of the expansion of their in the AWS marketplace mm -hmm. today. And I'm thinking, wow, the IT person is probably going, oh, finally, all these shadow IT units that are popping up in finance and marketing and engineering and whatnot, they now have the ability to see and manage the entire software from search to deployment and management through AWS. What advantage is that going to give Deloitte when you're working with Coupa customers on implementation? That's probably too soon to say on that one. Um, you know, all, all the expansions they're having really help us with another tool to help clients. I would say though, there's always you know, measuring the benefit for that client and the risk. So even if you take Amazon, for example, just open buy for Coupa, is managing that. So Amazon, when they first came out with Amazon for Business, open buy, um, you couldn't control the categories that were exposed to the client. Now you can, but you can't control the items. So having a, a process in place, having a category strategy, and then maximizing it. If Amazon works for that client, fantastic. If AWS is going to give them more visibility across their platforms to manage those better, fantastic. But I think it just gives another opportunity to bring clients back into Coupa, have a look at the value for Coupa from an end-to-end -end solution, and all these wraparound acquisitions they're making or expansions with their, with their clients, Coupa Pay and all those other pieces out there. It's just another thing for them to have a goal and understand and make a decision from their business whether they're going to use it or not. But there's, there's value across the board. Every, every client is different. Absolutely, but it, and it's also that, that consumerization approach that if you can take a process that somebody does on their own time, whether they're buying soccer balls or a pool, and bring that to their business life, that consumerization following them, you think, wow, the potential there to transform every industry, every function, every line of business is just infinite. So, truly is dot, it. dot, dot, to be continued. Absolutely. I wish we had more time, but Max, thank you so much for joining me on theCUBE today and talk to me, talking to me about what's going on at Deloitte and uh, congrats on having a standing room only session. Fantastic, we thanks, it's been a pleasure. Time. Good. All right, take care. For Max Gromick, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE from Coupa Inspire 19. Thanks for watching. Oh, <laughs>